Anthony's got a cool episode for anyone who's trying to take their career to the next level and really step it up to how to be a good manager uh, when you get that promotion. Anthony, what's the title today? Yeah, so it's how to get off on the right foot when starting a restaurant management job. And I'm actually surprised it took us 90 some episodes to get to this because I have some really deep scars from from my in my lack of tact and, and effectiveness when I got my first management job. So it's try to be everyone's best friend. Yes. And no rules, very lenient. Is that, is that how to do it? And yes is the answer. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's being an effective. Just like parenting. Just always say yes. Always go with ice oh, cream and you're done. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's a great episode. I love this. Yeah, this is good. We're done. It's going to be good. Well, thanks <laughs> for joining a Restaurantopia. <laughs> Imagine a perfect world where you can build a restaurant, open the doors, and make loads of money. Unfortunately, those days are over. It takes great leadership, hard work, and long hours to operate a successful restaurant. Together, we can make it happen. This is Restaurantopia. I'm in my 40s. My career has taken a weird path. I've managed a, a few people, not a ton of direct reports, but I will say I'm not good at it. It's one of the things I want to improve on. I tend to be too nice. Mm-hmm. And you know, people know me like I can get aggressive, but when it comes to managing people, I feel... I don't know. I, I, I get so frustrated because I, I feel like I shouldn't have to motivate you to do your job. Oh, you didn't hire right. No, I just, I, I, think, I think you're right. I think yeah. you're, I think, man, it's, Fuck. I just got deep. You, you, <laughs> I, I wanted to say no to that so bad. And I go, no, that is what it is. That is what it is. My daughter asked me that this morning in a car. I was texting you guys and we're sitting there waiting. Wow. And she goes, that is, that is it. I, Fuck, you just, oh, you just messed him up for the day. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you should listen to our podcast. We talk about this a lot, no, right? The, and again, I love the accountability. It's my fault. Yeah. It is my fault. Well, that's, that's actually one of the things. It's like 12 bullet points down. That It's, wow. it's your fault, right? Um, not you specifically, but the manager's fault. And I, and I texted, I was texting you guys today to let you know I was running late because they didn't have the doors open and I couldn't kick her outside because it was too cold. And she goes, why are <laughs> oh your boxes? You walked to school up both ways. I know. With corn flake, I know. With cornflake boxes on both feet. And his mind is. Dude, our, our schools were closed. His. Daughter actually had school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So, I was hoping they my, would cancel. So my that... child could not go to school today. <laughs> yeah. Not, not in this weather. Well, listen, he has didn't... to play. He has to play Xbox These all day long. Frigid temperatures. You oh. didn't grow up in the rough streets of Stowe, Ohio. Oh. Was the problem? Oh. No, Eli doesn't. There's no sharp corners in Brexville. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything has the plastic like protective thing. And, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then there's pillows and like I, I mean it was over yeah. asphalt. His yeah. is on like this um. Uh, Eco-friendly uh, plastic pellets that if That's you, good if, for if, your you fell, if you fell from a skyscraper, you'd, you'd still live. <laughs> <laughs> so I was texting you guys, letting you know I was running late. I think you came back with a joke or something. Isabella was reading, you know, the phone, and she goes, "Why are your bosses so nice to you?" She's like, "They never boss you around." I'm like. <laughs> Well, I try not to need to be bossed around. And she goes, well, how does that work? I'm like, well, they hire well. You know, yeah. like that's what they do. Like they, they, they hire well and put people in the right positions. Some, 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 some of us hire well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had our bad hires. Come yeah, of course. Come, come on, on, man. No, come but on. why is that? Like this, what it is, is a different episode. <laughs> no, yeah, no yeah. I, I know so, it's a different episode. but it's, Because it's hard to hire right, dude. It's no, not easy, but it, especially as busy as you are. No, no. It's my fault. Of course. Not, there's no excuses. It's my fault. Slow down. Hire slowly. Fire quickly mm. and make sure that you have the the right team member that's going to be on your team for life, and that is going to add value, and you're going to be able to add value to their life. Yeah, I love that. Man. Stuff. That's, yeah, we can stop that. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. like so mic drop or whatever the case may be. There. So you got you got a key holder. Yeah, and they're doing a great job. You elevate them to to GM. Mm-hmm. How do you make sure that they're set up for success? Because they, I, I'm just trying to set the groundwork of what what we see often happens. They know everyone in the building. Yeah, they've worked with everyone in the building, mm-hmm. and now they're essentially the boss. Yeah, that's a tough one, right? Yeah, because it, it, there's old you and new you, and all yeah. of a sudden you're dressing different. You got a new car, you got a new air about you, new walk, a new talk, all that jazz, and they're like, you got a new responsibility. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it. So how do you overcome that? Is a good question, right? Yeah. And I've been in that position quite a few times where I got promoted from line cook to lead line cook to sous chef, and and. I, you know, there's always a competition going on. So part of it was like, hey, I won, you know. But the yeah. other part is like, don't get a big head. Like, you got to handle that very tactfully. You got to have velvet gloves on for a long time until everybody gets used to it. It's almost like the grieving process, right? Because I wasn't the only good line cook at that restaurant. There was a lot. 
Yeah. And we all had a friendly competition going on that fueled the success of the restaurant. When someone got promoted, it was like, how'd they get promoted and not me? Mm-hmm. You know? So then there's this immediate like grief that comes in and it starts with resentment. Like, well, look at them. They're doing that. And I do this. And yeah. the worst thing I ever did, and let me rewind a little bit because that, that, that is something we need to put on hold and unpack the dynamic. My first restaurant job, let me paint you a picture because this is absolutely not what to do. I got promoted. I, I was a line cook and I had to move down south to help my parents and I took a job at a restaurant and, and the owner and the chef were like, oh my God, we got a CIA grad in Tuscarawas County. Let's hire this person. So I'm like, sweet. So they're like, listen, this is our operation now. This is where we want to be and this is how you're going to do it. No, oh, by the way, we're going on vacation next week because we've been waiting for this for five years. So uh, once you get trained up in a week, in a week. What could go wrong? We're going to go on vacation. Okay. I'm like, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, whatever. I'm 25 years old and mm-hmm. full of vigor and I'm ready to roll. You was, know? This, was this also the wedding story? Uh, the wedding reception? You remember that? Yeah. I do. Yeah, that was like a 21 hour day. I'd never forget that. Yeah. yeah. yeah but this is the same, same time. company. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, like the wedding happened. I got hired in maybe July and the wedding happened at the beginning of October. Yes, yeah, set up for <laughs> success, right? Yeah. Um, really great guys. It's just, I think they were young in their restaurant tourism mm-hmm, sure. too. Yeah. So they tell me all the things they want to change. Me being a note taker, bullet points all the way down. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. On my first day, I marched in the back door like, damn, Yosemite Sam. Guns blazing, <laughs> rooting, tooting, bah, 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 shooting. We're changing this. We're changing that. We're changing this. And they're like, who are you? Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter who I am. We're changing this, you know. We're going to do this. First week, I lost half my staff. <laughs> Half my freaking staff's like, yeah, no thanks, bro. Like, we're out of here. Yeah. Right? So I got humbled, and uh, I implemented the changes they wanted to implement. Like, they empowered me to do this, mm-hmm. and they supported me through it and endorsed this behavior. I, I, looking back, it was it was an absolute travesty. But then I came in, and, I, and then what happened after that, I overcorrected. Right? Because then I lost half my staff. I recoiled. Oh, my God, this is a wrong approach. Being young and naive, I didn't hold the ship steady. I went from the far left to the far right real quick. And then all of a sudden, I became a pushover. Mm-hmm. Right? And then both instances are completely wrong. Right? Mm-hmm. So that was one of the first things I want to talk about is like, listen, for the first month on your job, and, and this is how if, if we have young restaurateurs out there that are listening to this or aspiring restaurateurs. Listen, that first management job, and especially if you're coming to a new company. I'd recommend that you set the expectations immediately with your your hiring officers, right? Like the owners and the stakeholders and say, listen, what's expected of me for the first month or so? Mm-hmm. And fight for only one job, learning names. <laughs> Just fight for that and be like, listen, I don't want to do anything but get acclimated, right? And yeah. learning names is a metaphor for the full acclimation process, full training process. I think one of the biggest mistakes you can make, especially if you're in the organization, you jump that management position, you say, now I'm in charge. Now I have the power. Now I can do these ideas and implement all these changes. And, and quite frankly, the opposite is true. It's you have less power when you're the manager, quite honestly, in my opinion, you have less power because now you got to be serving your constituents. If you want to be effective, you got to, you got to have that culture. Now, listen, I'm not saying let them walk all over you like I did. And I'm not saying be Yosemite Sam like I did either. But the fact is, if if you manage it right, the power of the people is really what's going to guide your culture. You're the mediator. You're the filter. I think we have an advantage because we learned from one of the best, our mentor, David. Wait, you have a mentor named David? (sighs) Not this one. Oh, I was like, I think I, some guy uh, named David mentored me once or twice. Wonder yeah, if the same guy. Uh, same guy, I think. Yeah. You have to get acclimated. You have to make sure that the staff likes you, trusts you, respects you. And then this is the key element here. The staff has to know that you care about them and oh, yeah. care about their success. Right. And then you can start doing the coaching. Yep. But you have to lay all this groundwork to mm-hmm. win hearts and minds to be able to coach and to really affect change. That's my belief. I, I, I happen to agree. So you have to establish that trust. That's mm-hmm. the word trust, right? But well, and can I pause you for a second? Because I want to ask you a question yeah. on this because I you think it might be, might, be, might be relevant. Do you feel, because you, you mentioned there's very competitive staff and, mm-hmm. and you got promoted up and mm-hmm. people might have looked and said, oh, why him mm-hmm. and not me? <clears throat> Do you feel that, because leadership is one of the hardest things. Yeah. Like we talk about it like it's easy, but it's one of the hardest oh, things. Yeah. Okay? yeah. The thing is you never get it right. Like there's never, never one chance where you're like, yep, A plus, right? Like yeah. it doesn't happen that way. Yeah, no, that, but it's just, it's just not, it's not natural. Like not everybody's elite, you're like, yeah, that's you know, not everybody's meant to be in leadership, mm-hmm. you know? So do you, but do you feel that you were promoted into that position because you were great? You were the best at the job at that level with those other people you were competing with? Or do you feel like you had leadership qualities that the owner or the manager, whoever saw that promoted you to, to you know, like, cause I feel like some people. I was not the best cook on the line. Okay. Okay. I was not. I was not the most talented. So, so I was not the most creative. That's where I think some of the confusion can be 
Well, they were comparing apples to oranges. So the line cooks were only looking at my cooking ability. The higher ups were looking at my intrinsic yeah, values. That's what, and okay, my so that's what that's what I'm getting at. So mm-hmm. again, I know we're talking about the manager coming up, but I'm, but yeah. I'm thinking about don't as the leader of the organization, don't always look at the most talented people in the job yeah. as that's they're 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 going to be the well, they're going to be the best boss, the best quite, leader. Quite that's, frankly, you're you're if you're taking your best line cook, you're hurting the operation. Take the worst line cook that has that has management ability. You well, know what I'm saying? I'm like, not saying you want somebody that you disregard the skills no, of no, the job, no. but I'm saying like leadership is a whole different category it's of It's a things. different skill. Let's, let's yeah. say that that I was a good enough cook, right? I'm a pretty solid cook. Like you know, sure. I, I can cook. I have some chops. But I'm not. I mean, we, we call you cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. But I'm I'm not the best at that. Where but, my money was made was the administrative aspect yeah. and keeping things organized yeah. and strategies and planning and, and holding people accountable and being able to talk and communicate effectively. Where a lot of my cohorts weren't. So no matter how talented you were, it didn't matter because that skill set doesn't necessarily translate to leadership, right? right? But you're promoted into incompetence almost every time, right? Well, you're promoted until incompetence, right? Yeah. No, no, no. You pr- <clears throat> think about it. You're doing your current job. This, and I'm not saying this is for every role, but your line cook, and then you're going into a new job that's a completely different skill set that you've never done before. So you still have to learn. You have and, to learn you have and, the and competencies the, of, yeah, that, of yeah, that role. Of that yeah, role. Right. No, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So it, it's it's an inter- interesting dynamic. Unless you're moving from one organization to another for the same exact role, then it's a little different. But when you have a promotion. I think that's where this becomes so dynamic and so different than really any other GM position. I, I think what it comes down to in that, in that instance, it really, the quality of your promotion, and the quality of your effectiveness is contingent on the quality of your support you get from ownership and the higher ups, yeah. depending on how they translate or, or articulate this to the staff and why you were promoted and what they're looking forward to and why you fit the bill. And a lot of times we don't take the time to do that. Hell, a lot of times we don't even take the time to let the person get acclimated into the job. It's like one of those retroactive hires. And that's what I was at a few times where it's like, in that instance, I gave you the first time it was like, they couldn't wait to hire someone. It was, it was, they were boiling over, they were stressed mm-hmm. out, they were burnt out. They hired me three months before or three months after they actually needed me, right? Yeah. And I've seen, I've seen this where the information is not effectively communicated to the staff. And that's what we happened with me. And you have a mutiny, just like you said. Yeah, yeah. Because like, someone well, in it that. It sounded like it was almost choreographed. Like, hey, yeah, here's yeah. all the things we hate about how things are going. Fix this stuff. We're out. Yeah. Yeah, bro. You know? Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and yeah. the hatchet man. Yeah, yeah. And, and think of again. Let's let's look at all of the staff's uh, feelings and and what they were going through there. Put themselves in their shoes. So there was staff there that got them to this point in their journey, and were disregarded by having this new manager kind of thrust upon them. So if they would have done a better job of communicating, talk to the the key stakeholders in the the back of the house and let them know, hey, this is what we're having. This is what's happening. This is our, our game plan moving forward. They would have set you up for success. Yeah. And we talk about that all the time. As an owner, you need to make sure that you're setting your team up for success. That's part of it. Especially yeah. that new hire because that new hire is going to struggle. And I did. And I didn't get things right. And, and thankfully, the one thing about my personality is I'm, I'm a pretty – I'm not afraid to be vulnerable. I'm not afraid to be wrong. Yeah. Uh, and I try to be humble. You know, I, I think it's it's a choice a lot of times. But so I was able to kind of bear my soul in times of duress. I, I didn't have that machismo or that pride where it was like, no, you're wrong. Even though I knew I was wrong, I was blaming other people. But it, that wasn't the case at all. If yeah. I messed up, I owned it. I said, listen, ride with me. I'll get better. I promise you. Just yeah. stick with me. Just mm-hmm. ride this out with me. Yeah. And it worked out. I ended up, you know, it, we had a great culture after a year and a half. It worked out fine. It was that because of the affinity that the staff had for you or for the the ownership group or what what was the common thread that like um that, that or the restaurant the concept what was the common thread that you think that you got hearts and minds of, of most of the staff and i love how you did that that's that, a great question that, that is a great question yeah I, it, it comes back to that trust thing right so okay. when i talk about vulnerability they see someone who's in a position of power who maybe they misread and they're yeah. like oh okay, I need to give this guy a second chance. Okay, Like he messed up, like he that. owned it. Mm-hmm. He showed us accountability. Mm-hmm. He was sincere about it, mm-hmm. right? I apologized to everybody. I spent one on time with everybody and said, hey, listen, yeah. this is where you are. This is where you need to be. This is how I'm going to help you. Yeah. This is where I need to go. So again, I showed them my warts and I said, listen, I need to get here and we all need to get here. And I think that helps, right? Because there's a transparency there and there was honesty and, and it's hard not to trust that when it's coming from a, a genuine place. I, I think we talk so much about systems and making things consistent, but you're not running a computer. You're running a restaurant 
that's filled with human beings yeah. and you have to be compassionate and to show that humanity and uh, love for your staff and employees, I think is critical. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with you. And especially on the onset, I mean, listen, it's, it's imperative moving down the road, but it's got to be 10x in the onset. And again, I, I wasn't joking. When your first first period of time on the clock as a new manager, I don't think you should have too many responsibilities. I think you should really just be allowed to focus and that there's a key crucial element, be allowed to focus on just getting the lay of the land and building rapport with your staff. But don't you think that a well-run organization that doesn't have a lot of fires to put out mm-hmm. is easier for a new manager to transition into that role because they're not constantly worrying about putting out fires. And I think that's critical. And I think it kind of goes to the overall success of an organization mm-hmm. and why transitions occur better at better run organizations yeah. because uh, there's fewer fires and it quite frankly, makes the job a lot easier mm-hmm. and all the transition. So well, you're dealing easier. with less adversity. Correct. You know, and that, that, that obviously in life, that's easier. Like if you're just on easy street all the time, like who doesn't want that? Right. Yeah. No, there's, it's case in point, man. You I, know, that, that being said, it's, it's, you got to have that, that permission. And I wasn't given that permission to just get acclimated. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that part is crucial because again, it comes down to rapport. Yeah. And then also too, like do remember it, it, this is a two way street. You're trying to impress everybody while they're trying to impress you. Yeah. That's a recipe for disaster, man. Like, it's, it's crazy, but it's what we do, right? Mm-hmm. And we know we do it, and we still do it. And we, we got to leave. You got to understand that. So my theory is if people are trying to impress you, you got to humor them a little bit. Give them their soapbox. Give them their opportunity to show what they have because it's important to them, yeah. right? And I'm not saying let it get out of control, but, you know, give those people that attention that they crave. Well, I was in Florida last week, and I played one round of golf, and they it was three of us, and they put a, a fourth on with us. And it was an attorney, uh, interesting guy, went to seminary and got a, a degree in psychology. And I asked him, so what's the common theme? What are you seeing time and time again when you're meeting with couples, when you're meeting with, with uh, executive groups? And I'll tell you what it was. And, and it, I knew it once he said it, that he was 100% right. He goes, people do not feel heard. People, yeah. people do not feel heard. Well, it's because we suck at listening. I think you're right. I think, yeah. I th- I think but, but also, people... You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to take action sure. on what they're saying. Right. But they definitely need to know that you hear them mm-hmm. and they have a sense of that they feel heard. And I think that is critical as we move forward into 2022 and 2023 that we really have the employees' mental health and mindset in mind when we're talking to them and coaching them. I couldn't agree more. It comes down to validation. Yeah. Right. You validate my feelings. You validate my opinion, even though you disagree with them. I like that. I like that a lot. I think even in disagreement, it's probably more powerful. Yeah. Because it's like, listen, I disagree with you, but I want you to be able to speak your opinion. Mm -hmm. I value your opinion, even though I don't agree with it, but we can both have our own opinions in the same space. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's, I mean, that's culture, man. That's what it comes down to. Right. I mean, how many times have you, especially in the last couple of years, you've had a discussion with someone close to you, maybe about something as polarizing as politics. Yeah. And you have to stop talking about it because you're both spending so much time trying to convince the other one to get on your side. (laughs) So that kind of leads me to my next point, right? All right. So we talked about validation, right? We want to listen to people and we want to be building rapport. That being said, you have to be careful with a new new job because you always have the teacher's pet, Mm -hmm. right? And so your first impression of people is is not always right. And and we know that. So you go into an organization and you have that person that comes up and they're like the Johnny do-gooder and they're look at me, look at me. You're like, I like you. You got the right spirit, the right uniform. And we fall in love with that person and we hone in on them. And I can promise you it's a huge mistake for management because now all of a sudden the perception is you're taking allegiances with particular people and favoritism yeah. before you even started. You just feel attracted to that person because they're what you're looking for in an employee. And now all of a sudden you're homing in on them and that's a problem. It goes back to what we talked about in the past on different episodes is like it's one thing to go out with your staff after a shift and have a drink, but have one drink. You pay for everyone's drink and then leave. Do not do not get in there and don't date anyone. Don't. Uh, don't spend too much time with them after hours. Do not go to the line cook's house for the party. Again, if you do those sorts of things, it's one thing to spend f- uh, five minutes and, and you know make an appearance, but it's totally different to really get ingrained in this the friendship or and, the social. And that's not an easy thing to do because look at Anthony's example of like three, four competitive line cooks. Mm-hmm. You know, he gets promoted up. Yeah. You know, he's been going to the house yeah. every weekend to party. Yep, can't now do all it. of a sudden, yeah. That's, no, no, I've well, been through and, that. And, and 
you cook the steaks that you stole from the restaurant. Right, right. <laughs> so I was like, because, yeah, no, you know that thing we used to do? We can't do that anymore because yeah. I'm the boss. Like, yeah, yeah. It's my, <laughs> no, that, that's my bonus that we're, we're eating into. It's funny because that dynamic is in place sometimes, yeah, right? right? Because then everybody's got to straighten up because they know you're watching and so on and so forth. But it, it's Listen, that fraternization policy or fraternization policy, I, I think as a manager, if your organization doesn't have it, you still have to hold your account, yourself accountable to that because you murk the lines of leadership yeah. so easily. I love going out. I love – you know, footing the bill for the first round of drinks, get everybody started, high five, good vibes, and then get out before you puke on your shoes. Because once they see that, now all of a sudden your respect level starts going down and down. It just yeah. erodes over time. The more you show yourself in that semblance of, of vulnerability or that context of vulnerability. And people's selective memories and mm-hmm. the haze of alcohol that occurs sometimes yeah. as far as what what occurred, what trans- right. transpired. It's uh, stored of reality. Yeah, the... Uh, the comment that got misinterpreted, yep. the, you know. Well, and that's anything. the thing you got to remember, right? Because even even if you're at the bar, you're still a, a function of the organization mm-hmm. if you're a manager, right? So it's a, it's a legal term. It's Latin. I read it or learned it in restaurant law, and I think it's called respondeat superior, if I'm not mistaken. Do you know that one? I know that one, yeah. Yeah, because I'm just, I don't know. I'm trying to impress you, man. Uh, I'm impressed. I, I was impressed when you uh, turned on the mic. You know, yeah, that's, that's easy. So what you say is essentially an extension of what the organization says, right? You have authority what have you, but you're still representing the organization no matter which way you look at it. Yep. And especially when it comes to employee-employer relationships, it's, you know, there's potential for liability no matter where you're at. If you do something off the clock or, you know, the communication with the employee, if you say something wrong, we're going to do a whole few episodes on employment law this year because I think it's so important. Sounds really exciting. No, it actually will be. Because it will make the difference if you're a two or three unit operator of being exposed to a multiple hundred thousand dollar liability. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That you probably don't have insurance for. God, you hear the horror stories of Christmas parties and things where someone does the wrong thing. But anyway, I digress. So I, I love that aspect of it. But, you know, listen, we talk about vulnerability. <laughs> Be vulnerable. It's okay. If you make a mistake, don't hide that mistake. 100%. Show everybody that it's okay to make a mistake. Show everybody that you're going to be accountable and fix the mistake. Yep. Model that sort of behavior. And so many of us, we get promoted. We have that fixed mindset where we're afraid to lose it. It's like, my precious, I can't lose this. Yeah. You know, it's everybody's going to judge me. I'm not as smart or I'm not as qualified, right? Um, but the fact is, it, it, everybody makes mistakes. Just come out with it and be like, look, this is what I did. This is how I'm going to fix it. Done and done. I encourage you guys to do the same thing. I think I'm going to use a buzzword, but imposter syndrome. I think so okay. many managers have imposter syndrome where they feel this uncomfortableness that like, oh, I'm not ready for this job or this, is, you know, I don't, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I don't no, have the skills. Well, and it, it ties right into your comment earlier about promoting into incompetence. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's, it, it's a, it is. Yeah. I mean, but you're, you're never going to learn it <clears throat> until you do it. So I mean, I did my first trial, uh, the second week I was an attorney and now, wow. I, I'd, I'd worked the case as a law clerk and I, I was familiar with the facts and everything, but again, you're never going to, talk to a jury you're never gonna do you know be the lead on a case i did the case by myself until you do it Mm -hmm. so and again i won i can't help on winners win but (laughs) i i you still have to do it you have to have your first management job you have to have your first yeah i know you gotta go in and break stuff as you say right break stuff yeah move fast break stuff you learn that's the stuff that stayed with me my whole life, I remember the opposing counsel, who I just beat, by the way. Did I mention that? Mm. Yeah, I beat her. Uh, I won the case. Like recently or the original one? No, the original one. Oh, oh no, no, You no, made no. it sound like maybe you, like, beat, you just no, beat no, her no, again. No, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> so my, my first case, the defense attorney, she came up to me, and I, I just won the case. And she said, good job, congratulations. Your style was a little unconventional, which was... A veiled insult, but again, I'll take any, you know. A wins, a wins, a win. Wins, wins, wins. Yeah. So, because she felt it's the not like she just, what I just heard from yeah. your vantage point was you weren't ready for the shit I brought. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And I was ready <laughs> for it, and I, I, I hit it out of the park. So, at the end of the day, you just look at, I don't even know where I was going with that. I won the case. Did I say that I won the case? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just to be clear. Uh, no, yeah. I think you were talking about like you. You, you got to do it. Yeah, if you're yeah, waiting, you you're it, waiting right? to be ready to do it. You got to do it. Yeah, no. It's, well, then it comes down to the permission of the organization again, right? That you got to put someone in a position where they can make mistakes. They have wiggle room <clears throat> to make those mistakes. Yeah. But that's where you go to coaching. Are you empowering your uh, uh, staff member? 
setting them up for success, maybe. Set, setting them up for success. But also, failure is part of growth and part of development. Yeah, it's so the best part of it. People always say, you never learn from winning, which I disagree with. I, I, agree. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly with uh, your, your I, sentiments there. You, I, you do learn, learn from winning. It feels awesome. Yeah. and But I feel that you learn even more from losing. No question. Mm-hmm. And that sting of defeat really teaches you you know how to to do things differently and you have to be intellectually honest with yourself and be self-reflective and really go back to what did i do good what did i do bad and what can i improve on absolutely absolutely so a couple more things here and then we'll bring it home right. um one of the things too is a luxury if you're a front of the house person and you got promoted to to a management position where you're going to oversee back of the house people negotiate time to learn their job and if it's vice versa if you, yeah. you know you got promoted to to a I leadership like role Ask for permission and time to mm-hmm. learn their job too. Because how hard is it to manage someone if you've never done their job? Not saying to master their job, because if you're a line cook, you're not going to be better than your career server. Like they're, they're yeah. master craft servers. <laughs> but at least do rounds with them, understand the rigors of their job so you can empathize with them. And as far as leading, it makes such a difference if you know the rigors of what they go through emotionally, physically, and, and just on the job in general, yeah. right? Like that empathy that. piece is huge. Well, right? And who cares if you actually learn the job? Just the fact that you reached out and wanted to, yeah. you know, just that action yeah. with the that's person fair. That is makes huge. A, a bare minimum, that's yeah, a win, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but if you know the job a little bit, you can mm-hmm. jump sure, in when times sure. are to rest too. Of Roll of your course. sleeves yeah, up and let them know you're not in the ivory tower of leadership and you're lording over them, right? That's a big deal. Um, also, your old job is not your current job. I don't give a shit what you did at your old job, right? I, I don't like care that. how I they like did that. it there. I That's not here. You want to implement some of this stuff later? Absolutely. Let's put a strategy together, but quit talking about it quit quit telling me how awesome you were in that job like you uh, got hired here and promoted over me i hope you're awesome i i've worked for so many lawyers that it's always glory days that they when they're at the big firm when they're like, talking about their their first case that they did on their own four and touchdowns in one game uh. at polk high <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing the letterman's jacket tomorrow i'm wearing the letterman's jacket tomorrow uh the past is the past. Yeah. Let's talk about the future. Yeah. Let's move forward. And again, if you want to take those gems and those best practices from your old organization, do it. But do it in a systematic way that you're implementing the change correctly, that it will take hold. And, and it's not just the new shiny thing of the day. Right. Sure. Yep. I got three quick bullet points. These are the takeaways. All right. right. Take it away. Be visible. Don't hide in the office. Don't hide behind. Be visible. Manage by walking around, period. You know, don't, don't dive into the administrative stuff until till everybody's gone. Okay. Throw up, not down. If you got to complain, complain that. upwards. Do that. not complain with your cohorts, especially if you just got promoted from a lower position. Yep. Always throw up, not down. And then the last one is the most important one. You got to command respect, not demand it. How many times do you hear a new manager say, you have to do this because I'm your boss? And especially in that dynamic that we talked about where you get promoted amongst your peers yep. and you say, well, now you have to listen to me because I'm your boss. Yeah. You're already wrong. You're already wrong. Mm-hmm. You have to model the behavior that they can't ignore, that they will feel bad not living up to your standard because you're yeah. modeling that standard. So command it. Don't demand it. And I'll add one more. When you make a decision, is this honoring the company and doing what's best for the company? Yeah. As that, opposed that, to your own personal brand. Correct. Yeah. If, if you always if you always honor the company and you always do what's best for the company, that that will serve everyone's interest in the long term. Right, right. So to wrap this thing up, I think we gave some good points about what to do and especially what not to do in my instance for for newly hired managers, but then for owners and operators too. Make sure you're allowing these people to live within this realm, to make these mistakes, to be vulnerable without consequence, to have that support where you articulate to your staff why this person's promoted, what they're (laughs) going to do, and what what you initiatives you have them up to. Incredibly important. Share this episode with them and check out the show notes. And I think it's a real resource and a tool for any new manager and also feel free to reach out to anthony uh, anytime anytime yeah no yeah actually it. i love it when i get reached out to no yeah. great <laughs> no, thank you. anthony great, awesome episode man thanks yeah. for putting this together and uh we'll see you guys next time always yeah. a pleasure fellas thank you anthony for the content beautiful awesome you're beautiful everyone's beautiful and everything is beautiful yeah. this is a high quality pod <laughs> <laughs> thank you everybody take Cut. care Cut. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to Restaurantopia. The gratitude that we have for each and every one of you spending your precious time to listen to this podcast is immeasurable. Please make sure to tell a friend about this podcast. And also, if you have any feedback for us, visit us on restaurantopia.com and drop us a line. You can also subscribe on your favorite place to listen to podcasts. Thank you and have a great day. All right, what do you guys want to talk about? Difficult conversations with your staff or shit you should do and not do with your first management job or restaurant, getting a new restaurant management job?
how to get off on the right foot when starting a restaurant manager job. We're, we're going to do both of these. So yeah, you start where you yeah, feel but best. let's do because I, I like let's do the restaurant management job because okay. I know it's be really chummy and friends with all the <clears> staff. <throat> yes, and then be very lenient. Let them get away with everything. Yes, right. That's that's how restaurants he, he, are managed. Here's my. You guys know my New Year's resolution. What's it? To not sound like an NPR radio host. Really? Because I think this last episode we did it a little bit, but I would notice like we we get into this like uh, kind of we're talking and we totally have an NPR vibe. Yeah. Oh, it's it's we, undeniable. But I'm saying like I feel like we're a little more spunk. Oh, okay. I'm just putting that out. All right. All right. I'm saying me like me too, like me for sure, like yeah. maybe more. I'm just. Oh, okay. I. Well, thanks for listening to Restaurant Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. More feel-good feel vibes. We're more feel-good vibes. Come on. We, 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 got, we got the morning zoo here. More feel-good vibes. And bring it on in. Yeah. Honestly, those Anthony, had, what, listen, what, 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 what do we got? What do we got today? That had a lot of value for me. It's I appreciate Thirsty that. Thursday, everybody. Oh, I appreciate oh, your honesty. Man. It's a, I know. I know. This guy here. I know. It's it's a, that's, that's, well, that's Mr. Feng Shui himself. It's, uh, it's like a, uh, a very old raspberry. <laughs> it's like, it's my... It's, what do, you, what do you mean? All right. I'm excited for your episode here. Oh, that's, that's a nice change of pace. Who's going to yeah. bring us in? Uh, gonna, whoever. Who's, who's gonna bring, what's, what's, what's the gonna title? Bring us in? It is uh, How to Get Off on the Right Foot When Starting a Restaurant Management Job. <sighs> okay. I can't imagine. Uh, no, I crazy. tell you what, it's going to be a great movie, though. <laughs> <laughs> is the movie actually going to come out? Probably not going to come out. No, probably not. <laughs> uh, all right. What, 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 let's talk about this. <laughs> See, Finally, was, somebody got it out. Got it. <laughs> we are excited to announce the Restaurantopia VIP Text Club. Join by texting the word podcast to 844-928-4257. You will get access to exclusive content, industry news, deals, announcements, pro tips, and more. The VIP Text Club is an exclusive community of independent restaurant owners and professionals. Join today. Message and data rates may apply. Please check our website for our terms of service and privacy policy. We also want to thank our sponsor, Hillcrest Food Service. If you are a local independent restaurant and are looking for a distributor who has chef and operational consulting, provides marketing support, does menu reviews, and most importantly, wants you to be successful, reach out to Hillcrest Food Service at hillcrestfoods.com. 